You remember on one occasion when the Lord lived down here on earth that his two closest disciples, James and John, with their mother, Mrs. Zebedee, came to see him. The Lord saw them coming, of course, and he knew exactly what he was going to be asked. It's not very long before Mrs. Zebedee comes out with it. She says, Lord, she says, please, in the day of your glory, when you sit upon your throne, when you reign from the river to the ends of the earth, when you sway your scepter over river, sea, and shore, when you come into your kingdom, Lord, I, I should like to request that my two sons, James and John, that one should sit on your right hand and the other on your left. Well, you know, that really was a very noble request. Would God indeed that every mom and dad had this as their supreme ambition for their boys and their girls that in the day of his glory their children might sit on his right hand and on his left hand in his kingdom. What a noble request. The Lord Jesus looked at her and he said, I'm very sorry, uh, Mrs. Zebedee, very sorry. Request denied. You see, that was not his to give. That had to be earned. And this is how it's earned, you see. He'll be looking for three things. Christ, likeness of life. He says, who shall ascend, who shall stand? He that have clean hands and a pure heart. Clean hands, that's your outward life. A pure heart, that's your inward life. And he joins the hands and the heart together because we do what we do because we are what we are. Christ likeness of life and Christ likeness of longings. Who shall ascend, he says, who shall stand? He that hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity. The kind of person who doesn't live for the wrong world. Christ likeness of life and Christ likeness of longings and Christ likeness of language. He says, who shall ascend, who shall stand, he that hath not sworn deceitfully. For God is looking for men and women who are absolutely dependable, utterly trustworthy, whose word is their bond, and who when they say, I'll do it, they do it, no matter how inconvenient it eventually becomes. And when they say they'll do it, they do it for the simple reason that once having given their word, it would not occur to them not to do it, not sworn deceitfully. And so we have the Lord's claim and we have the Lord's call. And the rest of the psalm is concerned with the Lord's coming. Five times in the closing verses, uh, the Holy Spirit speaks of the Lord Jesus as the King of glory. Twice he issues the challenge that the gates of glory be lifted up. Twice the question is asked, who is this king of glory? Once the answer given is the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Once the answer given is quite different, it's the Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Now why do you think the Holy Spirit records twice the asking of the question who is this king of glory and the answer given is different on each occasion i mean there's got to be some reason for that in order to understand the reason for that we have to put things in their proper perspective the lord jesus stepped out of eternity into time he clothed himself in human flesh and lived amongst us down here for 33 and a half years and during that period of time he won victory after victory over the world and the flesh and the devil every form of temptation was pressed upon him and presented to him satan tested him and tried him with the three great primeval and prevalent temptations of the human race the lust of the eye and the lust of the flesh and the pride of life but it was all in vain he was the Lord strong and mighty the Lord mighty in battle 
Uh, Satan had him betrayed and manhandled and mauled. He had him scourged to the bone and crowned with thorns and took him out to Calvary's hill and nailed him to a cross of wood and they gathered around to mock him while he died. And all of a sudden it seems Satan realized his mistakes because he urged him to come down from the cross. It's all in vain, you know. It was the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. He defeated Satan every time, not once in thought or word or deed, whether as a babe or as a child or as a teenager or as a man, whether in the home or in the classroom or in the synagogue or at the workbench or treading the highways and byways of his native land, never once did Satan succeed in winning even so much as the ghost of a victory. He was the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle tried to get at him once through his mother. He tried to get at him in cunning, verbal encounter, bringing the best brains of the country up against him. It's all in vain, you know. The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. When it was all over, they took him down from the cross and they placed him in Joseph's tomb and rolled the stone against the door and all the might of imperial rome put its seal upon that tomb it was all in vain vainly they seal the dead jesus my savior vainly they watch his bed jesus my lord up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph for his foes he arose a victor from the dark domain and he lives forever with his saints to reign he arose hallelujah christ arose he was the lord strong and mighty the lord mighty in battle he stayed around for 40 days appearing here and appearing there and then having proved himself alive by many infallible proofs he gathered up that little band of excited disciples and marched with them out through the gates of the city down across the valley of the Kedron up past the garden of Gethsemane and on up to the brow of the Mount of Olives then he raised his hands in parting benediction and began slowly and majestically to ascend toward the sky. The stunned disciples stood there watching in amazement as their Lord began to ascend toward the sky. The last thing they saw was the print of the nails in the soles of his feet. Then the cloud came and wrapped him around and they saw him no more. They didn't see what happened next. But David, writing under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit a thousand years before, he saw what happened next. The Lord Jesus ascended the star road to glory, arrived before the pearly gates of the celestial city. He stood there and he said, lift up your heads. O oh, ye gates, and the King of glory shall come in. The watcher at the gate looked through and he saw a man standing there in a battered human body. He said, who is this King of glory? The Lord Jesus showed his pierced hands and wounded side and he said the lord strong and mighty the lord mighty in battle he is the king of glory they opened the gates and let him in and he went down hallelujah avenue past amen square along hosanna highway and up past beulah boulevard until he came to the throne of god and then he sat down at God's right hand in heaven. Most astounding fact in the history of the universe that is a man in a human body like yours and mine sitting on the throne of God in heaven and has every right to be there for he's God over all blessed forevermore. Amen. 
and you can see him sitting there watching and the invitation is given and somebody gets up and comes forward and the Lord Jesus says to his father here comes another one <laughs> Or a little child responds in such a simple way to mother's presentation of the story of Jesus and the Lord Jesus says to his father, here comes another one. He's been seeing of the travail of his soul and he is so satisfied. One of these days the very last one is going to come. And then the father is going to say to his son, now son, go and get him. And he'll get up off his father's throne in heaven and he'll come down the star-spangled splendor of the sky and he'll burst into the environs of our planet and he'll say, Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. And the dead in Christ shall rise first and we who are alive and remain shall be caught up in clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And he'll put himself at the head of this enormous multitude of people. This countless multitude of those who have been washed in his blood and whose names have been written down in heaven and who have been baptized by his Holy Spirit into the mystical body of Christ. And we'll follow him way back up until we stand with him outside the gates of glory. And he'll say, lift up your head, O ye gates. And the king of glory shall come in. And the sentinel at the gate will look through and he'll see him standing there. And all this enormous multitude of men and women, boys and girls. And he'll say, who is this king of glory? And he'll say, the Lord of hosts. Is the king of glory and he'll open the gates and in we'll go we'll go down hallelujah avenue and past amen square and along hosanna highway and past beulah boulevard and till we come to the very throne of god and he'll say they're all here father <laughs> haven't lost one of them yeah. and then the Lord Jesus will sit himself down upon his father's throne and he said now gather around my friends we're going back <laughs> he'll say you see, friends, the moment our back was turned, all hell was let loose down on that planet. And we're going to go back and put an end to it. And I'm going to need some people to help me run an empire. I'm going to get up off the throne of my Father in heaven and I'm going to go down there and sit upon the throne of my Father David. And I'm going to need people to help me run an empire gather round my friends let me look at your hands and let me see your heart tell me my friend which world did you live for were you one of those people i could trust Selah. <laughs>